Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial about the motion capture tool using Blender and Avastar. So let's get started and um, uh, let's select these objects that we don't need, so let's delete them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to load in a fresh new Avastar, so Shift A, Avastar, it takes a few seconds to load it in uh, into our scene. Alright, once we are here, um, the first thing we need to uh, to import after this after, after uh, the Avastar, if I move it just a little bit slightly fo uh, forward, is to import the BBH file. To do that, we need to go to File menu, Import. The second option is the Motion Capture uh, .bbh. So I click that. You need to locate some bbh files uh, that I happen to have um, some dances here just to make it a little bit more interesting we choose one like this one and before we click on import bbh we need to take care of this part of the panel uh, which is the operator panel uh, what I'm meaning here is the uh, that we need to change the scale from a factor of one that will uh, make the, the, the imported BBH armature scaled to meters. Instead, um, the Second Life avatar and uh, therefore Avastar is uh, in uh, inches. So the conversion rate for between meters and inches over here we need to type in 0, uh, 0 0.0254. Once we have done this, then we can click on the import BBH button. So it takes just a few seconds to load it in, but we can see now that our uh, BBH file here has been imported and its scale matches the Avastar scale. Alright, now to transfer the motion from this object, so from the BBH file created object to the Avastar, which has no animation right now, uh, we need to follow a process called retargeting. So first we, let's check what this dance is and we see that it goes a little bit further beyond the timeline that we have set by default at 250. We see that here uh, the last keyframe on the uh, BVH file is located at frame number 296. Let's change the end file to 296. Okay, this is important because uh, the motion transfer uh, tool will transfer the motion uh, up to the end of uh, the timeline here. So if we left it at 250, the tra motion transfer would be clipped up to 250, uh, leaving all the rest not assigned. Okay, so now we are uh, almost ready to start. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to open this panel here that opens yeah, by hitting T on the keyboard and the motion transfer tools are available in this sub panel over here so it's pretty easy to uh, to use and uh, my suggestion is just to um, follow the instructions from up to down so the first thing that uh, Blender is asking for is a source object in this type and field if we click it we have a list of suitable objects that we might search for uh, or just type in the name. Um, to see the object name we have to be in object mode and down here Rosa 12 it shows the name of the currently selected object so if I select the avatar that I get avatar so its name is avatar and instead this other motion capture uh, armature name is Rosa 12. So knowing this Let's type in the first letters in order to have Blender sort out and filter out uh, whatever, um, whatever we have typed in. So the first step is complete. The second step is to assign a target, which happens to be our avatar. So it is the first option, so pretty easy. Once we have specified this to Blender, uh, now it shows up a little bit more options. The first thing, uh, as I was explaining at the beginning, start from up going down. The first thing we encounter 
is the show bone mapping that I want to tick on uh, because it shows us uh, what is the actual core of this tool. This is the uh, remapping um, part of the whole thing. So we can do that easily in pose mode. So we can either go here and switch to pose mode or control tab. <clears throat> I will use control tab uh, from now on. So now we are able to select each single bone here and selecting them it also highlights its name uh, just beside the object name. So the currently selected one is the head, the next one is the neck and so on. Alright, let's go back to frame number zero so it's easier to select bones. And as we can see here, there is a, a list of bones available in the target object, which is this. And it searches for um, a bone name from the source object. So we can click here and we can look for or uh, scroll down until we find the right bone to, us, to be assigned to it, uh, but there is an even smarter and faster way. So the first thing is to select the, uh, the upper, the most upper uh, bone over here. And let's see here. So the first target bone is the skull, which is an extra bone on the avastar, which is not included in the BVH files for Second Life, so we just keep this blank. Uh, we'll, we'll do the same for uh, the toe left and foot left and uh, foot right and toe, uh, toe right because there are also uh, extra bones on the Avastar rig. So the next one in the Avastar rig that we can try to remap is the head, which obviously is the head bone. So if we click this button here with the head selected, we have the currently selected bone in pose mode be added automatically to this type and fill. So that makes it much easier and faster to, uh, to finish off. So the next one is the color left. So make sure to, to select the actual left side of our avatar. So L color, left color. So it's always relative to the character's size. And in case you, mm, you just make a mistake, like you assign the hand to the color, you can just click here on the X to unassign it. So that's pretty easy. Color right, let's go ahead this way. Okay, then the chest, abdomen. Okay, the COG bone is a, a little bit, COG and pelvis inverse bone are two bones that actually, if I go into pose mode for this that actually controls the rotation and the location of the entire body and the uh, COG bone is directly connected to the hips but on the second life avatar there's only the hips on the avatar instead we also have the inverse pelvis that controls the rotation of the pelvis of the hips so that means uh, that uh, COG and pelvis inverse need to have the same exact input, which is the hips. So this is something that you need to remember. Now let's go ahead with the legs, left, <coughs> left side and right side, and then we're basically done with the setup. All right. Um, I purposely avoided to use the mirror copy because I found uh, that it doesn't work pretty well on the Second Life uh, BVH skeleton because it doesn't respect Blender's internal naming convention for bones in order to have these tools to work. So I just skipped that and, do, and I did that manually. The next step is to have a reference frame, uh, which in this case happens to be the same exact pose. Uh, at the frame number zero as it is over here. Sometimes when you're not using uh, Second Life uh, um, Second Life compatibles animation, you might find your character in a different T pose, such like something like this. 
And so uh, at frame number zero, or maybe you can also not find the t-pose at all. And that's something else that we can find in BVH files not for second life. So in this case, you will need to go to an empty frame like the frame number zero. Oops. And then work your way out into make the two poses match as close as possible. And if needed, just go into object mode like this and uh, centering the objects in the same exact places uh, you try to make the two poses uh, fit together once you have done that uh, just reset the rotations once you have done that uh, remember to keyframe that new pose so that it stays recorded in the animation so if we go to a uh, certain frame number minus one it doesn't go in the negative frame range uh, there was a setting now I don't remember where it is but uh, if you're able to do that we just go to uh, an empty frame or frame number zero make the two poses match as close as possible and then you're ready to go uh, to go ahead and click on the transfer pose in this case the two poses are exactly the same so it will, it will take no time to transfer the pose as, um, when you click it if it takes a little bit longer just let it do its job um, it might take longer than what it took to me because this is already a second life um, animation and the pose transfer <coughs> uh, is just easy for blender the next step is to uh, make it seamless that means uh, to make an, uh, a looped animation out of something that wasn't looped so you have the blend rotation frames and blend location frames settings the simplification method but we're just going to skip this because we don't need it so the next thing to do is to click the transfer motion button once you do that uh, the transfer motion button will make uh, blender appear like frozen and um, just let it do don't click anything otherwise it might crash so I I do that and I put my record in pose uh, so that it, you don't have to to watch my blender to make all the calculations so see you in a while Okay, we we'll need to go back into object mode. Just remember its name is Rosa 12, so that uh, later on we can take a look at it. And we can start scrolling the timeline. Okay, so if we scroll the timeline, uh, we see that the, trans the motion transfer has been achieved. However, we see that there are some ugly imperfections on the Avastar that we loaded like let's see here where the rotations are, are scrambled a little bit and other like other frames like this this happens most probably uh, because we loaded in a fresh new avastar and the fresh new avastar if we hit n on the keyboard we can see down here um, if we select the Avastar, of course, um, we can see down here that the rotation controls are enabled because it says disable rotation limits. So let's click on all bounds and disable all of them. And we see that immediately disabling them, the animation on the Avastar is much, much more precise and um, it doesn't make too many imperfections however there are some imperfections here and there so let's spot together one of them so we can take a look at how we can edit it um, where was it like here you see that the source one is not having this movement this ugly movement the hand here is rotated like if it was broken so let's try to fix this to do that we need to go into the animation layout so from here uh, normally there is the 
uh, default one we need to go into the animation we're going to use a pretty nice uh, a pretty nice editor that will we will put here instead of the graph editor I move the timeline so I know here we are so we need to fix this <coughs> area and um, instead of going in and clean up all the curves from all these keyframes we can use this NLA editor uh, which is a non-destructive way to edit animations so we need to change this uh, panel here from the graph editor this one to the NLA editor and it immediately starts changing but since we have two animated objects we have two animated objects here and we actually don't need this anymore so we just select the DVH uh, armature and just delete it so we're left with our avatar only alright so this is the linear animation and the NLA editor instead uh, allows us to uh, work non-linearly uh, NLA indeed uh, stays for non-linear animation so in order to uh, start using this we need to click on this snowflake just beside the avatar action name and that turns the action into a box which is relative to the box that contains the animation and clears out the dope sheet editor over here we need actually the action editor because in the action editor we can add a new action to attach to the avatar so let's select the avatar and attach a new one so right now nothing happens because there is no keyframe here but if we start here and make a change something like this and I hit I to record the rotation only we see that now the uh, problem is has been fixed but the avatar is, key, is retaining now this new pose so let's see what we can do here like make this kind of change hit I this time available because it already knows for those bones what to do and another one another new pose right over here actually let's change this to normal and also rotations so I can fix this and I want to fix this too all right and let's grab this again make a pose something like this now we don't want to keep on animating until the end otherwise I mean we could we could have done it manually so I want this new moves to override the uh, the other ones and I want also them to stop having an influence as soon as this animation ends instead as it is right now uh, the whole thing is being kept down to the end so we can turn this into an NLA strip which is the name of these boxes here by clicking the snowflake and we got this uh, action over here we see though that still it is behaving as it was before but we have an easy fix for it if we click on this little arrow or hit N on the keyboard we have access to these settings that you might want to play with but basically we need to change the extrapolation type but let's make this window a little bit bigger okay for your convenience the extrapolation type is at hold forward and indeed you can see that this strip uh, gets a highlight after it so if I change this to nothing the highlights disappear and we see that now the underlying animation takes control of the avatar again but again once again when it starts it immediately jumps into a new position and when it ends it immediately jumps into an old position 
which is something very nasty, very nasty to see. So the next setting I want to fiddle with is the auto blend in and out that I want to tick off. And I want to put this uh, value to a certain number of frames, like seven frames as a blend in and seven frames as a blend out. So now if I zoom in, you see that two diagonal lines are appearing and they are taking seven frames. This means that this action is slowly uh, along seven frames taking control over the armature. So now if we take a look at it, we're actually replacing the, uh, this section here with this new part. And here, now it is smoothly interpolating between what, uh, what is happening in this strip and what is happening in this strip underlying. We have another option that we can fiddle with, which is the blending type, which by default is um, replace. We can try the other types. Uh, usually the add one sorts the best results. Um, not always, of course. Because this adds on top, adds the rotations on top of the underlying ones. You can, though, uh, change the, uh, the type like a subtract which is screwing it up. We can change it to multiply, so just make your own tries. Uh, also, this one breaks it. So probably only the add and replace options might be working correctly. Although here there is um, too few frames, there are too few frames, so probably the blending needs to be a little bit longer, like 15 frames. Maybe it's gonna work a little bit better. Okay, so as I add one here, I still see some skipping movements. So I think that I will just go to replace it. And let's move this too. So you see here the powerful editing uh, tools that you can use. <clears throat> And of course, you can also load in a different BVH file. I'm gonna tick off the auto blend in and out for the underlying one because it's a basic animation that we want to edit on top. And so you can go ahead and create as many of these for as many uh, selection of bones uh, until you're done and you're satisfied with the results. All right. So uh, this is the very basic. Probably uh, you could want to change the scale. So how long this uh, this um, modifying animation is covering on the timeline? And you see that's actually working. It's much slower. So if we play back it now, we see that it goes a little bit too fast. So. <clears throat> We have to remember the name of the BVH file because we need to open it, and it was Rosa 12. And let's open it with a notepad. So with the notepad, after the uh, hierarchy description, which is the uh, skeleton, we have here motion frames, 295 frames, time, which is how long it takes to play one frame, which is 0 0.09981, etc., etc., which we can um, just round up to 0 0.1, which means one tenth of second. If one frame takes one tenth of second, that means that in one second there are 10 frames. So, with that said, we can go in here in the render panel and take a look at what the frame rate is. And so, uh, being 24 FPS, it's not suitable for us, it's going just too fast. So let's go here into custom, and let's change the FPS to uh, 10 frames per second, uh, which is which was a really easy math. So now if we play this back, we see it's going to the upper rate spin which looks to be a little bit too um, 
a little bit too slow so we can change the FPS here to make it uh, to our likings like 15 frames per second let's see which looks a little bit better um, by the way this editing here has taken too long so let's scale it down to 1 or probably to um, 0 0.7 so that we have this action take actually shorter time let's move it a little bit so our editing now has taken place alright so um, once you have done uh, these kind of things all, on all your editing and whatsoever then you can export your, uh, your newly edited animation and always here in the render panel just make sure to change the mode into BVH uh, from BVH file to anim and that all the settings are fine for you uh, it is already a looped animation as I already know it so I just loop it from one to the end uh, one problem though is that this action has a T pose at frame number one uh, frame number zero at frame number one and then from frame number two the actual animation starts uh, which is something that uh, our avastar scripts already take care about so we don't need the t-pose and so the just make sure that the t-pose is not included in what you export so the start frame should be changed to 2 and in the loop settings as well so now you are ready to uh, actually export this and uh, just export that give it a name a location a name etc etc and you have a new anim format based off the bvh file that you retargeted with your edits uh, you might also want to edit the uh, attachment points animation if you like <clears throat> but that's basically it in a nutshell very brief nutshell all right thank you very much for watching and see you next time bye bye